everything is ready for the trial against Catalan leaders. In five days we will learn if the prosecutor maintains the rebellion charges and how many years in jail will be demanded for politicians and activists involved in the independence referendum. Hello and welcome to Catalan News. There are nine pro-independence leaders in prison. They all face rebellion charges and some misuse of public funds. This means they could spend 30 years behind bars. Four others currently on bail are accused of disobedience. The public and private prosecutors now have the chance to reduce these charges. But will they? In our show today, we'll give you the latest on this and we'll also speak to one of the lawyers of exile leader, Carles Puigdemont. On Saturday, it will be one year since the Catalan Parliament declared independence. Shortly afterwards, Spain filed a criminal lawsuit against some 20 officials and jailed many of them. As some mark their first 12 months behind bars next week, they will also learn how long the prosecution wants them to stay there. It is now officially confirmed. All of these former Catalan government ministers will face trial in the coming months for their role in last October's referendum and declaration of independence. In all, 18 politicians and activists will be tried, unlike the seven who went into exile. Today, the Spanish Supreme Court closed the inquiry stage and officially opened the trial phase for the case. This sparked outrage in the pro-independence camp, which is seeking their absolution, as the Catalan president said. Avui, avui es consuma la infamia. Avui era un dia que no havia de passar perquè nosaltres esperàvem l'arxivament que sàpiga l'estat espanyol que mai no acceptarem una sentència que no sigui la de la lliure absolució. The main parties in favor of the Catalan Republic called the court's decision a disgrace and claimed there was no separation of powers in Spain, something that one of the leading figures of the Spanish judiciary vehemently denied this morning. Jamás he recibido indicación alguna del orden político en relación con este asunto, ninguna. Ni en relación con la situación de los presos preventivos. The Supreme Court's decision means that the private and public prosecutors have been given five days to have their final say on the proposed sentences against the leaders. The far right Vox Party, the Spanish Solicitor General, representing the Spanish government, and the public prosecutor will say how long they think they should spend in jail and for what charges. And the underlying question is will they keep the rebellion charges, which carry up to 30 years in jail, or will they drop them? The pro-independence parties claim the Spanish cabinet can take steps to reduce the charges through the Solicitor General and the Public Prosecutor. This is their condition for supporting the ruling Socialist Party's 2019 budget in Congress. Seven of the prosecuted leaders won't face trial because they are abroad and Spain hasn't been able to extradite them. Gonzalo Boye is the lawyer coordinating the defences of the leaders in exile, including Carlos Puigdemont. We interviewed him and talked to him about how the failed extradition requests in Germany and Belgium can help the leaders facing trial in Spain, and also how the whole legal strategy is aimed at a single purpose, winning freedom for all of them, even if this means ending up in the European Court of Human Rights. Hemos decidido que la batalla se dé en determinado escenario y eso tiene que ver con el rescate, es decir, que lo que se está haciendo afuera tenga un impacto directo aquí. Y si el juicio no sale bien o si la sentencia ya está hecha, el juicio tiene que ser el trampolín para ganar lo siguiente. Cuando la planteen, yo pienso que lo harán después de la sentencia, pero sin lugar a duda lo pueden hacer mañana. Y, y no hay problema, nosotros les estamos esperando. El Tribunal Supremo Español hizo creer a los medios de comunicación, y los medios de comunicación en España lo divulgaron mucho, que eh, Puigdemont iba a ser entregado porque Alemania era un país amigo. Eso es no saber que en Alemania existe separación de poderes. One of the most recognized politicians exiled abroad is former Catalan leader Carles Puigdemont. Today he took part in the Crans Montana Forum in Geneva, where he met several international leaders. Carles Puigdemont has become Catalonia's most well-known politician internationally. Prosecuted in Spain for organizing a referendum and exiled in Belgium to avoid prison, he continues to have a key role in Catalan politics, even after being sacked as president. Today he attended an international conference in Geneva alongside world leaders at the Grands Montana Forum. 
The pro-independence leader met with the presidents of Armenia, Bangladesh and Lesotho, and political leaders from Montenegro, the Solomon Islands and the Democratic Republic of Congo. Puigdemont also met with Yulia Tymoshenko, the former prime minister of Ukraine and a leading figure in the Orange Revolution of 2004. On such a unique stage, the former president made a case for recognizing the right to self-determination of nations that pursue it through peaceful means. El dret a l'autodeterminació és una eina de pau, que és una eina que permet prevenir conflictes i en tot cas resoldre'ls, i que el que no és just és que els només puguin optar a ser reconeguts en aquest dret a països que hagin engegat guerres o que s'hagin matat entre ells. Established in 1986, the Kranz Montana Forum is an NGO organizing events with key decision makers worldwide. Over the years, its events have been attended by world leaders such as Yasser Arafat, Shimon Peres and Mikhail Gorbachev. The organization is headed by Jean-Paul Carteron, one of the founders of the Ambassador Circle in Paris. He praised Puigdemont and criticized the political situation in Catalonia and its implications for the EU. Is it admissible? dans l'Union européenne au XXIe siècle, que des hommes politiques soient poursuivis pour leurs idées. The president of the forum also denounced pressure to withdraw Puigdemont's invitation, but Carteron made it clear that he was a citizen of a free country and that he could do whatever he wanted while at home. Still in the international arena, the European Parliament today passed a resolution with big implications for Spain. MPs urge all member states to ban foundations that glorify fascism. And while you no doubt know that Germany doesn't have an Adolf Hitler foundation, Spain still allows the existence of the Francisco Franco Foundation, a group that defends the dictator's legacy and is openly far right. For the first time, the European Parliament has directly asked for it to be banned. Moving on now, today we'll learn the latest unemployment figures and they show a positive outlook for Catalonia. The unemployment rate in Catalonia fell to 10.6% in the third quarter of this year and this means Catalonia is leading the fall in unemployment in Spain as a whole. The current unemployment figures are the lowest since the beginning of the economic crisis back in 2008. But despite these optimistic numbers, there are still some 400,000 people without a job. Do you remember Rodrigo Rato? He was Spain's vice president and head of the International Monetary Fund. He entered jail in Madrid today after being sentenced to four and a half years for embezzlement. A court found him guilty of misusing funds from Bankia, a bank that was later bailed out by Spain. While heading the bank, Rato not only kept the fraud, but expanded it. Managers used their credit cards to spend some 12 million euros on private expenses. And with this, we bring today's show to an end. We leave you with an invitation to do some sport. Check out these children in Catalonia. They have a new swimming activity in school that looks like a lot of fun. Enjoy and see you tomorrow.